Good morning, ladies. Today is January 20th already. I cannot believe that. I always say that, but seriously, I think every month gets just a little bit faster and life goes by a little bit, you know, at more rapid speed every single month. So today I am so very excited because we have a guest speaker here with us, Miss Gina, and she is a diamond coach, a success club legend, and the leader and creator of the Resilient Regimen. Um, and I cannot wait to hear her um, today just speak on our call and to really empower us with her message. She has a wonderful one coming up. So, um, Gina, I'm just going to go through a couple quick announcements and then we will take it, we will pass it on to you to take over. Um, guys, I cannot believe it. But Believe it or not, we have got to start thinking summit. Um, we are just five months. Um, this is this morning. So I mean, I guess, yeah, no, this is this morning. So five months, 22 days and 23, now 22 hours away from the 2017 coach summit in new Orleans. I cannot wait. Um, please guys, make sure that you have your ticket. If you have not registered yet It's July 13th through 16th. I know Lindsay and I are kind of in the process of starting to look for a place for us to all stay together. Um, as a team, you just get a big old place right in New Orleans that we can hang out together, we can spend that time together, and we can really um, learn and grow. Summit is a life-changing event. I went to my first one last year. I will never, ever miss Coach Summit. Please do not miss it. Some of you even have earned um, your free ticket, which is amazing as a success starter, so make sure you just have that on your calendar if you did so, and you have things all squared away um, over there if you were a success starter. Um, and we'll put some, we'll probably get Get a poll thrown up on the team pages this week just to see how many people are committed how their ticket are going so we can start with our numbers and really really start thinking um, team series about summit coming up um, and it will be an amazing amazing time I know it seems far away five months but it's gonna be here just like January as it rolls right by it's gonna be here before we know it so I cannot wait to get us all there this year at coach summit um, our team cup, this is new. This is like really right around the corner starting February 1st. Kudos, shout out to all of you that really took on leadership. You stepped up and created those teams. I think in our team, we have five teams just from Forever Faithful um, for the Team Cup. So that's 25 of you that have made that commitment and you are with your team. Um, remember, it's you and four other coaches make a team. Um, guys, people that participate in Team Cup see rapid growth in their business. They see um, they hit crazy numbers of success club just because you are pushing for something something bigger with a team um, working together really helping your business grow working with like-minded people working together um, we have some great ideas um, for maximizing that team spirit um, throughout the cup month for our within our forever faithful team so please be after just be excited and all in for Team Cup. There's awesome prizes on the line just for you doing your job as coach and hitting Success Club and getting out there and helping people change lives in the month of February, and you're gonna get rewarded for it. And remember, it's all a level playing field. You can only have one diamond coach per team. So no matter who you are in this network, you could be a winner of Team Cup if you put your mind to it and get yourself in a good team and work really hard together um, just to make that magic happen. That being said, I just have to throw out a little Reminder that January still counts and we still need to get out there and help lives this January. Do not hold off for Team Cup. If you went to the doctor and you wanted to feel better and you wanted to feel better today, they're not going to say, okay, well, we'll wait till February 1st to give you your medicine. No, that's not how it works. You need to help people feel better now. So if they're ready for you now, if they are ready to commit to your January group, then you get them there now. And in February, you'll have great momentum to drive through and help your Team Cup succeed. All right. Okay, moving on to a quick couple recognitions before we hand it over to Gina. Um, we have two brand new Emerald coaches on our team this week, and I wanted to praise them um, as 
much as I could possibly. Um, a lot of you don't know Jenna yet, but Jenna is a brand new coach in her second week of coach training and has already achieved emerald rank. So she is just blown out of the water. So um, if you're friends with Jenna, you know, just give her congrats um, on Facebook or in our, if you're in our new coach training group, make sure that you've um, congratulated Jenna on her great accomplishment. You know, those wins as a brand new coach are huge to feel. And I know that she's empowered by that and helping more lives because she just feels great and um, successful already as coach. And to Ms. Brittany, who has been working her tail off for this Emerald Ring, um, and her hard work is not going unnoticed. Um, people, she is impacting lives. She is changing people every single day. She's showing up. She's been consistent. She is yet to miss posts on Facebook. She is yet to miss her invites. She is going after this. She has really stepped up and put her pedal to the metal and is making her business grow. And this is just the first of very many um, recognitions and success for Brittany. So congratulations to you, Brittany. I know you're on the call. And of course, we congratulate Jenna in our coach training group. And to all of you that have points on the board, this is incredible. Um, just kicking butt at Success Club, getting your name up there on the board. Even if you just have a couple points on the board, you are making, you're changing lives so far. We've changed 36 lives as a Forever Faithful team, which is incredible to me. And a special shout out to Miss Jerry, who is seriously killing it at Success Club 13 and our top producer of the week with 676 personal volume points. Personal volume is huge um, with, you know, if you look at the new elite report and things like that. So Jerry, congrats to you and way to make your magic happen this week, all of you. And hey, I think I'm pretty sure that we can get everyone's name up on that board by the end of this week. I cannot wait for this leaderboard to just completely explode because I know that you guys are totally rocking it. Okay. So here we go. Without further ado, I am so happy that my talking is done because I cannot wait to hear Ms. Gina. Um, today, she is going to cover a topic that I think we can all hear and are going to benefit so much for about failing forward. It's not over till it's over and just that power of sharing your story. So Gina, do you want to share anything? Do you want to share slides? I can stop sharing mine. Yeah, I, okay. I'm a very prepared person. I love it. Oh, okay, I'll let you take the I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So guys, first before I share my slides, congratulations. The fact that you have rank advancements, the fact that you're on a call on a Saturday morning, it says everything about the way you respect your leaders and you respect your business and guys this grind that you're doing this is what matters for your business this is honestly why you guys and i the fact that team effort and it's impressive it's impressive to see your consistency and i'm going to talk about that in this call so i'm going to share my slides and we are going to get started so this is the beginning of my presentation. So I've been a coach for two years and you'll hear about it. My journey to being a coach has been something that has honestly been very difficult, not because of coaching, but because life happens. And honestly, for the six like first six months of my business, I was a discount coach. I honestly did not respect the business. I didn't want a business. I was a trap, like I still am, but I was a traveling therapist at the time. I had two jobs. I had no time. I just needed my Shakeology paid for. And honestly, it was something that I had no clue how it was going to change my life. And so my journey to coaching did not start as the way most people's do. But it's honestly a constant process of having to fail forward in this business. And I always tell people that think about co like coaching and then they think about quitting. And honestly, at the end of the day, no matter what's going to happen in your business, because life is always going to happen, it's not over until you say it's over. So until you officially put in that document and give up on yourself, because that is what you're doing, it's not over. But I do something and I hear it from a lot of people that I share my story well. And it's because during this journey as a coach, I've had a lot happen and there's no way to go into hiding as a coach. But I know and I've learned thanks to coaching that it doesn't matter what you go through. It's about how you react and what you do with it. 
And so who am I? So who was I before Beachbody? This is one of the first things when you're thinking about sharing your story, you should think about. You should think about who you were before Beachbody because I am met with a lot of resistance because I am fit. And a lot of people tell me they can't do what I do. And it's because they forget that I wasn't this person two and a half years ago. I come from a very difficult childhood. I'm a traveling therapist. I don't have a life. I'm a contract or DM worker. So that means somebody is in charge of me. I have to work certain hours. I have to work certain days. I have zero flexibility in my schedule. Hence why coaching is so important to me because I have no freedom. I am what everyone will tell you. I'm a gypsy. I'm a very free-spirited individual. I just want to go with the flow, and I want to travel, and I want to inspire people. I am not a nine-to-five individual that wants to show up and do things for somebody else. I don't want to be told how to live my life by somebody else. I was a challenger, and I've been fit my entire life. I've played soccer since I was five, and I went through a breakup. It's something that a lot of people don't know because I still don't know how to share this part of my story, but I was with the person that I intended to spend the rest of my life with, and we owned a home, and if like life was perfect, and one day it wasn't, and everything was gone, and I gained weight. It was the first time in my life that I'd been overweight, but I wasn't just overweight, I was sick. I was literally just letting myself go, and as a result, I needed a challenge group. I was a discount coach for a very long time, but I never missed success club. And you'll hear me talk about that because at the time of my first challenge group, I had just had a second surgery for a life threatening mass that I did not have money for. And I had to pay an upfront cost of like $8,000 that year, just in surgeries to say I didn't have money for Shakeology is not an understatement, but I was told if I helped and inspired three friends a month, I could have my Shakeology paid for To think I would miss that opportunity, there was no way. I have anxiety and I have suffered from depression. So I know that life is tough and things happen, but I know and you'll see that this business truly can be the thing that changes your life. So why join a challenge group? When you're talking about sharing your story, it's not about the programs, honestly. It's not about the weight loss. It's about how you're going to make somebody feel. In that short six-month period of time before I joined a challenge group, I became borderline pre-diabetic. I was struggling with this huge loss. I had had to move. I, I loss a family. I became overweight. And a lot of people, they look at your pre-pictures. They look at where you had to start. And a lot of people don't realize is that at the weight I was at, everyone thought, oh, she just, you know, she's out of shape. But no, I was overweight because the amount of weight I had gained in such a short period of time wrecked my internal health. I was short of breath all the time. I was born with a lung condition. I will forever struggle with high level impact workouts. But at the time I had honestly got so sick that I had no energy, I had no motivation and I had no strength. So when I talk about joining a challenge group, I don't talk about the programs. I don't talk about, oh, these containers. I share what they're going to get because people need to know. They need that incentive to know that they're going to get something. But when you talk about why they should join a challenge group, be okay with sharing your faults. Be okay with sharing where you were and why you joined a challenge group because the result of why you joined a challenge group is so epic. For me, I completely turned my health around in a year. My doctor could not believe that I no longer needed my medication. And it was all because of the dense nutrients and Shakeology. I finally got off medication I have been on for so long long. And that's why I want people to join a challenge group because I want them to know what it feels like to just be healthy, to feel good, to be able to do the things they couldn't do. So when you think about sharing your story with challenge groups, really explain what you experienced, what you learned. And as a result, now you're a coach. Why are you a coach? It's because you had an epic experience in a challenge group and people need that. My journey to being a coach has not been this thing where you just go, you're walking up the hill and it's just straight to success. It has been an amazing roller coaster. It's funny that, you know, most people wouldn't see failing as amazing, but for me it is because I'm learning so much. And just my first year as a coach, I hit success club every single month. It's just non-negotiable. In my opinion, if you don't hit success club, you don't really have a business 
because you're not adding new challengers to your challenge groups every single month. At the time I had become a coach. I was running a challenge group every single month with another coach. I was still working seven days a week, three weeks at a time, and only having an occasional Friday off because I had surgery follow-ups. I was drowning in my life, and I couldn't see it. I was so bogged down with working, and I never had time to do anything. I had no clue who I was anymore. I had been in this relationship and had this perfect life. People looked at my life, and they always said, she just has it together. Look at, like, things are just coming together for her. And if you knew a lot about me as a child and where I came from, and everything I had to go through, I'm not somebody that's supposed to succeed. I'm not somebody that's supposed to be doing well in life. And it's crazy that everyone thought this perfect life was here, but I had no clue who I was anymore because I let somebody define me. I went diamond that year because everyone was going diamond. And I was like, well, that's just something I should do. But I didn't really understand the business still in my first year. I went to Super Saturday, every single Super Saturday I could go to, and each quarter I went. And I attended Summit, even though I truly still at that point didn't want a business. And I can tell you guys that events change lives. For me, I went to my first Super Saturday by myself. I'm a traveler, so I'm all over the East Coast. And I went by myself, and I was welcomed by strangers. And in my world, it's very hard to make friends because I'm always moving. And the fact that a group of people would openly welcome a stranger and were kind, I can't tell you guys how amazing that feels. And Summit, like Liesl said, is seriously, it's a game changer. I could not believe the amount of positivity, the amount of people that want to share with you to grow your business, to see you flourish. There is no selfish nature in the Beachwater community, and you just don't see that in this world. But what's kind of crazy about my journey, what's different is that my passion for this business came with a lot of pain. While I was at that summit, I had been living in the South for six weeks. I realized that as a result of my situation, I had to move on with my life, and I always wanted to live in Florida, and it finally happened. And then six weeks in, we were at Summit, and my grandpa, who was my best friend, had a massive stroke. And my family wanted, you know, they didn't want to tell me. They knew I was at Summit. And at the end of the Summit, they finally told me. So I had to drive from Nashville to Gulfport because I was staying with Janae. And then I had to drive all the way back to Pittsburgh. And he ended up passing away two weeks later. And it was one of those things that, like, if you've been through loss, guys, if you have lost something that's important to you, that's a huge part of your story because the amount of people that have come to me because I shared my story, because I was very open about this loss, the amount of people that talk to me about grief and how I positively handle my anxiety with health and fitness, with nutrition, with the Beachbody community – it's what people need. So these things that we want to hide, these things that we don't want to share because we don't want people to know, they need to know. They need to know that there is a positive outcome no matter what happens. A month to the day after my grandpa passed away, my dad passed away. He had sudden heart failure, collapse, and that was it. And it's one of those things that you think that life can't get harder. You think that it can't get more difficult, but then it's going to. And what's crazy is in that short period of time, the amount of coaches in the network that came to support me is the reason why I'm still in this business, even though I thought about quitting. Because after my dad passed away, we found out that same week that my best friend who'd been fighting for cancer for three and a half years was going to pass away. And she ended up passing away the week before Christmas that year. So in a very short period of time, my entire world was taken from me. And I never miss Success Club because for me, I need this business. This business can give you anything that you want, desire, or need. But it comes from sharing your story. During that time, the last thing I wanted to do was post a sweaty selfie. The last thing I wanted to do was to talk about a challenge group. But the things I turned to every single day, the mornings of the funerals, I sweat. I sweat for something more because it truly, like Katie and Taylor say, every sweat matters because for me, this business became therapy. I didn't want to turn to being in therapy. There's nothing against therapy. I had lost my biological mother had abandoned us when we were kids and they put us in therapy as a, just a typical thing. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'd been in therapy and I wanted to do something more for myself. I wanted something that would be long acting and it came from this business. 
And at that point, it was kind of like a now what? So if you're in your business and you're in a struggle or you're going through something or you've lost some, someone, you kind of ask yourself, now what? If you've missed a goal, you ask yourself, now what? I feel like I failed. But the thing is, you don't stop. You just keep moving forward. So I continually ran challenge groups. I've always hit success club. And I was forced to slow down for that six months after my best friend passed away. I was just not the same. It was weird for me going home and no one being there. It was a complete like life-changing event, obviously, but it changed who I was. And it, I didn't change for the better, which is hard to say, but it's true. And that honestly, I learned what rock bottom was. I thought rock bottom was when I had to move out of my home and leave a family and say goodbye to somebody I thought I would be with for the rest of my life. And that honestly was nothing in the grand scheme of things. But when you're at your lowest of low, it's when you find your mission. It's when you come out fighting and share that in your story. Share the things that aren't positive, the negative things. But when you go to share those things, you always have to have a positive outcome, not because the world is rainbows and butterflies, but because you're here and you're not giving up and you're still working for your business. So the comeback, the last six months have literally been my defining moments. I'm the things, if you're somebody struggling in your business or you're wondering what's next or where do I go, make real goals, establish your why. For me, I had to establish my realist why. My little brother and I do not have parents anymore. He's 22 and in college. This business provides me the extra income to support him now. To know that this business provides me the honor to give him stability because he deserves that more than anyone is one of those things that I will forever be thankful for this business. So when you define your why, it is never just to help people. Everyone wants to help people because you're good people. You're people that have good intentions. What's your real why? What is the why that when you think about, like me, I get teary-eyed thinking about my brother and thinking about the things that I have helped him with in the last year since our dad passed away. That's your why. And that's the why you need to share with people because people don't sign up with you because of programs or challenge groups. They sign up with you for you. And when you think about all the coaches in the network, how there's so many coaches and people say it's saturated, it's not. The obesity rates are rising because people haven't found that person that they resonate with. So when you share your real is real, who you are, that is what's going to resonate with people. I had to learn to stop making excuses. I let life decide how I was going to run my business, and I had to stop. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Everyone can find that time in the day to send those invites out because at the end of the day, we just need to be connecting with people. I focused on mindset. Guys, personal development is so important to me. It's pathetic. In the car, I no longer listen to music. I am always listening to podcasts. I'm always listening to books on Audible because for me, I am still in this phase of grief where I have to constantly remind myself of positive things because every day when you wake up, you're slapped in the face with this reality and it's always going to be my reality. So for me, personal development has been one of the best gifts because it teaches me how to share my story. Shalene Johnson just did a podcast on talking about the scale and your body and all of these little tidbits. I could think of just making live videos from them because I was that person that was underweight who over exercised and didn't eat depending on how my workout was. I was that person that was a collegiate athlete that honestly was harming myself because I knew if I was thinner, I could jump faster. It's the things from personal development that help you share your story. And those tidbits are things that people need because unfortunately we're living in a world that is very scary. People need to know that there's somebody out there that is trying to make a difference. In my second year as a coach, I attended Summit and I had the blessing to attend the leadership retreat. That's the picture on the right. Guys, leadership for me was not just as important because of the business. It wasn't because of the trainings. It was because at leadership, I realized that I wasn't living my life. Here I am th with the blessing to be alive, losing my entire world, and I wasn't living my life. I wasn't living my life to the fullest. 
And in the first time I realized sitting there at the beach with everyone, like looking at everyone and talking to everyone and realizing that I wasn't sharing my story right. I wasn't sharing my struggles because I didn't want people to know that I was really struggling with losing my family. And it came to that point in death and then I realized that I had to sit down and get real. And I had to write goals that I truly wanted and needed. So I had to get real with myself. And it was at that point at Destin that these are some of the best tips I can give you when you're thinking about sharing your story and running your business. This is how I formulate everything. I had to learn to respect this business and set business hours. If you're somebody that goes to a job, like I go to a job Monday to Friday, I work my butt off at work. Like I am known for being one of the hardest working travelers. I just give 110%. It's just my base. I always go above and beyond. But I didn't do that for my business because on those hard days, I just didn't do my power hour. I just didn't do my invites because I didn't feel like I could inspire anyone. I didn't feel like I was worthy of this business. And I realized that I had to invest in trainings. I had to invest in my business. So I, when I'm sitting on a team call, I am sitting on a team call. I used to work my business during my team calls. I don't do that anymore. I'm investing in trainings because I know that I'm setting the foundation for a successful business. Personal development was key. Going back to the basics, when you're thinking about sharing your story, go back to day one. Go back to the person you were before Beachbody. Never stop showing up. That's one of the most important things I've learned. Even though I've not had this consistent rate of success, I've never missed success. Club. I've always hit my goals every single month for the base of my business. I just kept showing up. And I just made it non-negotiable because I wanted to inspire other people. And I had to learn to stop apologizing for who I am. And if you're somebody that always says sorry, that is what I do. I always say sorry this, sorry that. No, I'm not sorry for who I am or the struggles I've gone through. And it was at that event on Liesl. I've always been somebody that looks up to Liesl. But seeing Liesl's commitment and her desire and her passion was honestly a game changer for me at that event because it's finally when I realized that you have to truly follow what your intentions are in your heart and be true and authentic to yourself. So this is how I formulate my story. And this is my little formula I've learned from a, it's like listening to trainings, attending Super Saturdays. So at the end of the day, you're probably like, whoa, like how do I even share my story? You have to be authentic, living your story openly, whether it's funny or dramatic or riveting or weird. I am like a nut sometimes and my, I am always late. I just share it, guys. I am not perfect. I serve, not sell. You have to understand that you can decrease the resistance and the objections you're getting, which will facilitate improving trust, which will equal action when you want to serve others and not sell them something. Take them on a journey with a positive outcome. Think about what is your transformation? Is it physical? Is it mental? Is it emotional? Is it all three? I've been through it all in the past two years of this business, and I could have never expected that. But share those transformations. It's not just about a number on a scale anymore. People need more because life is hard. What have you worked through? When you're thinking about, well, what have I been through? You've probably been through a lot. Everyone's honestly been through a lot. So think about what you've worked through. And honestly, what have you been through? You have to work through these things, but what are the things that you've been through that enable you to be in the position you're in? So now you have to create that post. So this is how I break down my post. I always have a theme or a point or a very obvious statement I'm sharing. Sometimes I lead with a question or bolded words, but it's always very clear and I always separate it from the text. I set the scene, the time, the age, the year. I had one of the most engaging posts after my dad passed away and I had shared a picture of my grandparents' house. It is where, when I was 12, my biological mother abandoned my siblings and I and did not come back. And I set the tone, I set the setting, I talked about what it felt like that year and how honestly it was God giving me a second chance at life. And it was one of my most engaging posts because no one knew that. No, everyone knew that my mother was gone, but no one knew why or what happened or why I am so protective of my little brother. And honestly, those are the things, guys, that like, I don't want to share. I don't like talking about it. 
But then the, a lot of people came to me and talked about how one of their parents abandoned them. They grew up with a single parent and they just didn't think that success is possible because when you come from a realm like that, a lot of people don't assume you're going to be okay. A lot of people don't assume you're going to be successful, sadly. So who was there? I talked about the people involved. I talked about my family and I took them on a journey. So always share something when you're going to share your story, always lead something into the event. So I talked about our life before that. And then suddenly there is this change and there's always a cliffhanger, AKA your obstacle, that moment that you needed to change. For me, it, I was 12. It was a very awkward time in life. But I had to rise above that because I had a little brother that needed somebody. And then you have you want to talk about how you overcome it. It's not rainbows and butterflies. You'll hear me always say that. It's not, oh, life was great one day. For us, that was a very long struggle. He was little. We had to explain things in a very different way. But we overcame it as a family. And so you need to have a resolution. What happened, but how did it turn out? And then repetition. Tell it over and over until it's second nature. Guys, it does not even phase me anymore to talk about my situation, to talk about the, the childhood that I was raised in or to talk about the fact that those things happened. I have talked about it enough and shared it enough in a genuine and authentic way that it doesn't even phase me anymore. And that's how good you want to get at telling your story. So always have a call to action. When you go to share your story, the biggest thing that I think people forget is it's a wonderful post, but then there's no call to action. I always lead at the end of my post with some call to action. I separate it from the text so people see that I'm engaging with them. I want them to understand and always reiterate the point when you're telling your story. Why are you telling your story? Always explain that to them and bring it back in with your call to action. And then, guys, honestly, this is something I've learned in a recent training I took. Take it one step further, and this is scary, but make a video telling your story. Video engagement is stupidly high. It is significantly higher than any post you could ever make, no matter how great the engagement is. If you go to make a video, this is how I do my videos, because I get very nervous. And I don't want to stumble. So I create a note card and I bullet point whatever I'm about to talk about. So I go when I even before I go live, I have to write down on a post it where are my thoughts and then I just go for it. But when you're thinking about telling your story, write it out in that sequence, give bullet points, very short, concise statements, and always start with who you are. Be proud of who you are and where you've come from. And then grab their attention with a question. Something like, have you ever struggled with? For me, I have anxiety. There are days where I feel like my skin's crawling because I'm so busy and I never feel like I can do enough. So asking somebody simply, have you ever struggled with anxiety? And then establish why they're listening. Isn't it frustrating that? So have you ever struggled with anxiety? Isn't it frustrating that when you're out trying to get through your to-do list but you can't because you constantly think about every other thing you should be doing? And then what happened? How did you overcome it? And for me, with my anxiety, honestly, being a coach is the most helpful thing because there's a short period of time that I can get things done. So I've learned to overcome my anxiety. You will never hear me say I suffer from anxiety. I refuse to suffer from anything. I have overcome and I handle my anxiety through a healthy lifestyle. And then why are you sharing it? I want to help you understand what. So when you're formulating your videos, always grab their attention, but then ask them a question, something that's going to formulate a thought in their head. They want to see why they resonate with you. They want to put themselves into that circumstance, into that situation, because they've been there before. And then when you're telling your story, always ask them like something that you resonate with, something with but then what is the healthy way or option or how have you overcome it and always why you're sharing it with them I am sharing this with you because and that honestly resonates most with people because when you are in a video they see you they hear the inflection in your voice they know what you're going through because they've been through it but they need somebody to inspire them to know that they're going to be able to get through this so my call to action for any of you wanting to share your story is to put it out there. It's not going to be perfect. Guys, in the beginning, a lot of us as new coaches, we were wordy. I word vomited all the time. I've just simply learned to break it down after telling my story over and over. I have it down now. You want to set up a social media game plan. 
when you're thinking about your post, you want to be breadcrumbing leading up to your story. You don't want to just randomly throw your story out at 2 p.m. on a Friday afternoon. You want to look at the people that are engaging in your post and you want to lead up to it. So I always have, you know, always doing your three to five posts a day. Guys, I cannot tell you that consistency is so important. It's pathetic. You never want to just disappear because when you disappear with the way Facebook algorithms work, every time you disappear and stop posting, you have to start again. So you want to be just sharing your posts, being authentic, and then share your story. I tend to share my story in the evenings from Sunday to Wednesday at some point during that week for my personal network, my niche. That is when I get the most engagement. People like me who are busy professionals come Friday all weekend. All I do is play catch up going to post offices and going to banks and things. So I know it's not going to be that valuable for them because they're not going to be present. So I always have a game plan for when I'm going to share my story. And guys, one of the best things you can do is to go live. I know it's scary. It's not fun. The first time I did it, I stumbled like no other go live. When you're thinking about something or you're somewhere, like the one time I went live at the grocery store on a Saturday night, and I'm not quite sure why, but I had a crap load of engagement and it kind of made me feel better to know that I'm not the only weird one at the grocery store on a Saturday night. But it's those things. And I just talked about my meal plan and I talked about how I was modifying things. Go live often. They're saying that it's honestly the best engagement on Facebook, but Liesl does a really fantastic job of going live. I always see her go live and she's just sharing authentically about her day. And that's why she's successful because she's genuine. So go live, share your story, just put it out there and always utilize video often. Take time one day to bullet point all of your story, like write it out on a note card and tell it. And just make the video. And then, you know what, do it again the next month. You will get better. It will get easier. And your engagement will rise because you're being authentic and you're changing lives. And that comes from putting yourself out there. And that's how you're going to be successful in this business. And that's it. Oh, sorry. I've muted. Wow, Gina. I, I, I mean, so much to take away from this call. This is one that I think we all need to go back and listen to and just take it, take time to digest and think about our own stories. And I, I know I was thinking about mine as you were talking and just, um, I think what I love the best, at, well, first of all, I'll never forget the, how we sat in the pool and Dustin, just the two of us while everybody else was drinking margaritas and things. And we were just off the two of us and we were talking and I just saw you have this moment, Gina, I'll never forget it where you realized that you were holding yourself back and that you um, were so capable of just anything that you wanted and the way you talk to us today we all can see that and I just I, I just love hearing you talk today because I, I see that where you've evolved from and it's amazing so um, you inspire me every single day your story is incredible um, and I just thank you so much for sharing that with us today. I think you gave us all something to definitely take away. It's incredible. Um, does anybody, I wanted to, if it's okay, if you all open the floor, if anyone had any questions for you. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Gina? I do. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Gina, um, Love your story, by the way, and thanks for hopping on our call. I just got a question. So you have many pieces to your story, right? And so like your mom leaving and then your grandfather, your dad, and your friend. And I'm so sorry that all of those things happened to you. But do you, like you never, um, how do you decide, like you never drop the whole story at one time, right? No. You keep them all separate like pieces, correct? Because that would just be... Yeah, honestly, it's how I'm feeling. It's one of those things that like everyone and I people don't I know people mean well when they you're going through something. They're going people are going to tell you blanket statements. That's what I call them. I wrote a blog about it. A lot of people would like when I was going through this were tell me like it's going to get better. It's going to get easier. Here's the thing. No it doesn't. And anyone that tells you that unfortunately hasn't lost anyone close to them. It doesn't get better. You handle it. You learn to just handle it better. So there are some days when I wake up, like the other day, I was having like car trouble and I immediately thought I need to call my dad. He, my dad did everything for my car. And it was that moment. And that's an opportunity to share your story because that's what I'm struggling with that day. Or when I want to go to church by myself. 
my grandfather and I always went to church on Saturday and we went to dinner every time I went home that he was my Saturday night date. So I struggle now to go to church alone. So those are the things like I just share whatever I'm going through that day or that week, whatever is heavy on my heart. And sometimes it's all of it. Sometimes I just think like, seriously, like I wake up and I'm like, it's quiet. That's my, I think my hardest struggle is it's very quiet now because my dad always checked in on me and those things like those little moments, those are the things that like, for me, I go and do something for somebody. I go and pay it forward and try to inspire somebody else. So when you're thinking about how to share your story, don't kind of like plan it in the sense that you're like, okay, on this day, I'm going to share my story. If it doesn't feel true to you, if I feel icky and I don't feel like I can do it, I don't. Because I am somebody, I am very stoic. And so I hear that, like, I am just a very, like, they call me like the drill sergeant therapist. Like, I am tough. I My dad was military. Like, we were raised tough. And I don't like to be emotional in front of people. I really don't. But I had to learn to get over it. <laughs> because the tears are true. Like, the emotion, you feel it. You can, like, it just, it affects you. But if I can't do it in a way that I can still get my point out, I don't. Yeah, I cry. You know, I talk to people, I cry. So talk about cry when I talk about my dad and everybody, but I just have to be genuine. Whatever I'm struggling with that day or whatever's on my heart, I just share it. And honestly, like I share, like you'll see my posts. I talk about work. Work is very hard. My patients do not get quality care. I share the frustrations. I share the things or the, I'm always late lately. I don't know why I share that. And people like private message me like, I'm so glad you share the fact that like, you're not with it all the time. Cause we all assume you just have it together. And I'm like, no, I don't have it together. Like 90% of the time. Like I just, I just openly share. So when, if you have a lot, if you're somebody that's been through a lot and like, I always tell people, everyone always says that to me. They're like, I don't know how you do it. You've been through a lot. I'm like, I just do it because somebody out there, somebody else out there has been through more than me. Somebody else out there is going through something. So I just share with a genuine heart. Like I always just share with integrity and I just kind of breadcrumb things. I never, there's no way to share it all because people would probably just think I'm real. I am a hot mess, but people would really know I'm a hot mess. So I'm just always trying to be authentic and be genuine. So if you want to put part of your story out there, like I'll talk about my transformation, all of the issues I had with my health before I talk about a challenge group post, like I'll share that about my, that's my transformation. Yeah. The pictures are great, but my transformation internally was what was epic for me. So I'll share that around a challenge group time. Or when I talk about coaching, I breadcrumb the word coach. And I learned this from Jen Guthrie. She always like just throws the word coach out there somehow. And I noticed that about her. And when I think about the little things like being off this weekend, I don't have to work this weekend. I used to have to work. But that supplemental income from coaching enables me to not have to work every weekend. Those little things. So just kind of share those small wins. And if you're new coaches, guys, like I'm not somebody – that took this business seriously for a very long time. Don't make that mistake. Please don't do that. I wish I would have like just hit the ground running and just been like, okay, but it's the little wins paying your electric bill. You hear Val say it, those putting gas in your car. It doesn't matter what you're doing with your coach business. You're doing something and share that my wins are small, but they're my wins. And somebody else out there might just need that right now. But those small wins are leading me now to at the end of the year, I'm intending to leave my job and go home because I'm sick of being away. So just kind of whatever you're going through, wherever you're at in this moment, share that. That's part of your story. And your story forever is growing. And that's something I've learned. For These are the things I've been through, but I always think this is what I'm doing with them and this is where I'm going. Always have like that positive light, that place that you're getting to. You don't have to be there right now. You don't have to have it all together, but they don't know that. Like being an Emerald coach, that's so huge for your business. That is your first rank advancement. Who cares that there's 15 star, eight time, whatever coaches? That doesn't matter. You're an Emerald coach. That's your business. You're rocking it. Share that. Always share where you're at. Be proud of where you're at. Who cares? If, you, if I've learned anything, blinders. It's so hard to see people doing well when you're struggling, but I had to learn to be happy for those people because they're working for that. They're killing it. They're doing well. So if you're some a new coach and you don't feel like you have a lot of wins, you do. You're here. You're changing lives. Look at your leaderboard. Those are lives changed, not success club points. So always just share where you're at. 
I love that idea too. Like I, I think when I think of my story, you think of the past, you think of that, like where you came from, that's your story, but your story is forming every single day and people guys, they are watching that. I mean, that's like so important to remember. And it is those small ones. They're saying, Oh, well, like I remember when she just, you know, paid off her ex, bill and then wow now she's she's quitting her job like how amazing for the people that have been following your journey you know that they're gonna see that how much you're capable of you know what i mean like it's just amazing it's just to think about your story as more than just where you come from it's that every single day that you make an impact to and you're changing every single day you're continuing your story every day and you want them along for the ride yeah so. and like people they always say that people don't want to see others doing well. And that always bothers me because I'm naive and I just think everyone should have a good heart. But guys, when you share your story, people want to see what happens. They want to see that you're doing well. The amount of support my family has received after all of that is crazy. It's crazy the amount of people that check on me now because they know my dad's not checking on me. Like it's, it's cool. It's so freaking cool for lack of a better term that people want to see you doing well. Because when you're genuinely sharing your story and you're not just being very salesy, they can see that heart in you and that's what makes them follow you. People want to see you doing well. So when you genuinely start sharing from an open place and things start going well for you, they're happy for you. And that's a cool thing. And that's honestly, I think the best thing about coaching is honestly the community. The fact that at the end of the day, when things are at their hardest, you're never alone. There's always somebody to turn to. And that's what's cool. That's why we're coaches. That's why we have teams. And nothing against any other business, but that's why we're not reps or dentists. That's what you're can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I hear you. I just want to say, um, Gina, amazing call. Seriously, like that was such a good reason to wake up early this morning. <laughs> um, amazing. But something about you that it really sticks out, and I guess with some newer coaches too, it's hard to kind of get your grip on sharing your story and sharing good content. But the difference between like a surface level post and your posts are so different. Like I... There are so many, I have, you know, hundreds of beach body coaches probably on my timeline all the time. And there are so many that I scroll past, but like, I look at yours every time because I know, like, I want to know more about you. Like you were like that coach, that girl that I was like, she's freaking really cool. And like, I want to know more. Like, I want to be her friend. Like I want to follow her, but it's because you reached outside of your comfort zone because if you were to share a modern tips all the time, I don't care about that. I care about how I can relate to you and your story. So I think it's just really important to remember as coaches that there's, it's, it's, they aren't really coming to us necessarily for fitness tips. They're coming to us to be women in common and being able to reach outside of your comfort zone and just be yourself. So I love this call and I love you. So thank you for sharing it. Oh, it's really, really God, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I, we like to cry. I love to cry. So I'm glad we're here. I'm glad I'm able to cry with somebody. Everybody knows me in this way. Yeah, we cry a lot. Don't feel bad. <laughs> Our calls usually end with crying. So it's all good. Yeah, this is genuinely like, guys, this is what I'm talking about. Like that matters. Because at the end of the day, sometimes, and I'm sure you guys have been here, you don't feel like you matter. You don't feel like you're doing a good job sometimes, and it's hard. But it's people like that. It's like hearing Lindsay say that. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just if you learn anything from me, don't give up. Just don't give up. Because I honestly, like, I, I finally told this to my family. I don't think I would have survived without coaching. And that was a hard thing to openly share but I don't think I would be here without coaching because there there's nothing else to turn to sometimes but honestly the crazy thing and kind of the annoying thing that makes you like always have to get your power hour in is that this business doesn't go anywhere <laughs> it's on your phone it's on your computer like 
<laughs> it neg- beach body just negates the crap out of every excuse anyone can ever have and I don't know I have these moments where I just want to like be like when people give me their objections and I just want to be like dear Jesus I need to talk to a coach because it's just silly but this business no matter what you're going through it's there it's there and it's positive and I no matter if I who cares like if you want to you know like Val said on that one call if you want to be an Emerald coach forever you know whatever you rock your business you do you but it's always going to be there so it's not over and I always say it's not over until you say it's over you own this you own your life define your life stop letting circumstances define you and I did for a very long time especially after my best friend passed away because I still don't know how to share this part of my story but two weeks before she passed away every I went home every weekend when we found out like I was going home every weekend to help take care of her and we always sat she sat in her recliner I sat on the couch and her son sat in my lap and he fell asleep one night and she looks at me and she goes do you know the only time I see you happy anymore? And I was like, like, no, like I was like a very angry individual after my dad passed away. Like I was mad. And she goes, you're happy when you're home with us, which was my key that I needed to get home. And she goes, you're happy when, when you're with your coach friends. And she was dying. And our last conversation by ourselves was her telling me that I needed to pursue this business that I needed to get a business page and I needed to take this seriously. And then she was very direct and um, very like (laughs) kind of just black and white person. And she told me to get my shit together. And she told me to focus on this business that this is going to be my key to getting home. She's been passed away since, since a year in December. And guess what? This business is going to lead me home. She knew what she was talking about. She was dying and she took her last conversation with me to tell me that my business mattered. Like, if that's not a reason to not give up, I don't know what else is. Like, she's not here, but I can continue her mission because she inspired thousands of people with her journey. Like, it was crazy. But guys, like, there's somebody out there that believes in you. You're on this call because somebody believed in you. For me, that's enough to never quit because somebody believed in me. How dare I disrespect that? No matter what you do in this business, I truly believe it's the one business that's worth not giving up on because you're giving up on yourself. And I'm somebody that's not okay with that. I don't let people give up. Don't let my patients give up. I'm a hard ass. It's fine. I don't let people give up because I don't want anyone to ever get to the point I was at where I felt like giving up completely and just being done. And that's something I never want anyone to feel. So inspire people, share your story, but never give up on you because you're the first thing that matters. You have to take care of yourself. Like they say, when you're on a plane, You have to put your own mask on first. So thrive your business, rock it out, but share with intent because this like, seriously, I didn't expect to cry today. And like, thanks, Lindsay. Like it meant a lot. Like it means a lot to know that you matter. So that's what you guys do for other people. Well, you mean a lot to each and every one of us here today, for sure. Um, be more than you know, um, just hearing your words today were, is incredible. So thank you, Gina, so much for sharing. Thank you all for being on here and showing that, you know, you have it too. And you want you need to go out there and share, just like Gina said, and be you, be authentic. And just share life, share your story. People want to hear your journey. All right. So, Gina, thank you for your inspiration and your words and your great advice today. Um, I thank you so much. And I hope everybody has an absolutely wonderful day. Okay. Bye, guys.